Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to be talking about WordPress templates. Now, although the next most important thing after uh, the style.css file in terms of overriding your theme is going to be the functions.php file. However, we're not going to get into that until after we take a look at some of the template files and what they do. Uh, so the functions.php is going to be coming very soon and that's going to be a very important concept. However, we first want to take a look at exactly what's outputting this code. So as you may or may not know, the way this works is that uh, we have PHP files that are grabbing information from our database and are rendering HTML so that we can then display the page in the browser and see it as it is here. Now, the site's made up of many, many, many PHP files. However, the ones that are really controlling what shows up on the page are the template files. And the template files live within your theme. And in this case, the reason why our theme shows anything is because it's using the template files in the parent theme. Now, what we want to do is we want to override those templates. Now, we overrode the CSS simply by copying it and moving it over. And so we're going to do something very similar to that here. But first, I want you to right click and inspect if you're using Chrome. And if you're using uh, uh, Safari, like we said before, you'll have to download the developer's tools. And Firefox, of course, has something very similar, but it's just a little bit different. If you want to follow along, uh, please use Chrome or um, I guess Safari would be probably similar as well. But for here, if we've inspected this, you can see our HTML here. And this is actually what you're seeing in the code when you hover over things. As you remember, they get highlighted on the screen. What I want to point out is that we have different sections of the site here, right? We have the top of the page here where the head is getting generated, where we have all of our meta information. It's linking up our style sheets. Uh, then we have the body with our, our page tag wrapping pretty much the entire page. Then we have our header, and this is all of the information like our uh, page name and logo, stuff like that. Our main navigation is found in the masthead here. And then we have the main content area where we have a div with our main content, which includes this loop of posts here. And if we collapse that, we see this secondary. And the secondary is when you can see it's highlighted here is the sidebar. Then next we have the footer and then we have all of the stuff that's loading our JavaScript files at the bottom of the page and closing out our body and HTML tags. Now, if you're not totally familiar with HTML, I would recommend having an understanding about how to at least, uh, you know, get your way around an HTML uh, site and know exactly sort of what these tags are doing, what these elements are. If you don't know what the elements are, I would just recommend checking out. Um, I know uh, Code Academy has some really great basic HTML videos um, that, that can help you totally understand what's going on. So, okay. Here we have this, this page, right? And let's say we want to modify something in here um, and we want to modify this header. Something about this header just isn't totally the way we want it. So what we can do is we can override that with a template. Now, I've opened up my themes folder for the site in uh, Finder here. And you'll see we have our 2014 child, which is the theme that we're currently using. And then we have the parent theme, which is just 2014. If I open this, you can see all of the different templates that this comes with. And now it's going to take you a little while to, you know, always know what's in what template. However, things like the header are pretty self-explanatory. Now, what we can do is simply copy this, make sure that you make a copy of it and not just move it because uh, we want to have the fallback in the theme because we're just going to be overriding it. Now, of course, we have our header.php is within our child theme and we can come to Sublime Text where I have it open. I'm going to open up this header.php file and you can see inside of the header file we have not only uh, the all of the opening tags, we have our doc type declaration, we have our HTML, we have our head tags, uh, we have our opening body, our page, and then our site's uh, header with its masthead right here. 
Okay, so how can we prove that this template is in fact being in use here and that we're now using this header.php instead of the one that's in 2014? As long as your site isn't live and people aren't looking at it, you could go ahead and throw some sort of a header tag in here, just write like test or something. And this is just a visual confirmation that when you save this page, come back to your site, refresh, here we now know that this is in fact using this template. Cool. So we can get rid of that uh, that head right there, or that H3, and now we have a working template here, and we're all good, right? So we can go to town and modifying this if we want. Like, what say we don't want the search uh, form to be there at all? This just doesn't work for us, right? I don't like it. I mean. I'm, I actually don't really, I don't really have any thoughts either way about it, but let's say I didn't like this search and I just didn't want it to be there. Um, and not to mention we already have a search over here. So I could literally come in here and select this entire div that starts with search container, uh, encapsulates this uh, search box and then the PHP get search form, which is actually what's bringing in the search form. Uh, but if, of course, if we get rid of this, then we don't need the div surrounding it. So we can go ahead and simply delete all of those things, click save, come back to our page. And now when we refresh and go to click on the search thing, nothing happens. The only thing weird is that we now have this search toggle up here, up top here, and it looks like it's directly under the site title. So. Uh, this is pretty much the process of modifying a, a parent theme, right? You'd come in here and you'd say, okay, why is this search link still here? Inspect it. Okay, here it is, search toggle. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here and now I can just select this search toggle, this whole div, get rid of it, save once more, come back, refresh, and now it's completely gone from our theme entirely. What's really great about this is let's say that now doesn't work for you, right? Uh, in fact, you want to use the 2014 uh, uh, header again and you didn't like the modifications you made to it and you wanted to start fresh. Well, because we just made a copy of it, we could do a couple things. We could simply grab the header.php from the parent theme and just copy it right on over, replace it, now we refresh and it's using all of those modifications and I mean all of those modifications are now gone. Another thing we could do is just simply right click on our child theme header.php and delete it. After deleting it again, they're gone. So this gives you a little bit of idea about how this child and parent template thing works and why it's important to do a child template or a child theme of a parent theme because if you didn't, then you wouldn't have these options, right? And not to mention if you ever wanted to update the, the parent theme, then things would go wrong. So you now have the ability to overwrite some of your templates and you can modify them in ways, right? Now, if you're not super strong with PHP, that's okay because we're going to go over some of the more complex and more interesting things in these templates in later videos so that you can not only copy and modify templates, but that you could even write them from scratch. Because once you understand what's going on, it seems like it's scary and whatever, but it's really not that bad. So just keep watching and we're gonna be talking about uh, a little bit more about templates and then we're gonna get into functions.php with a basic example of things you can do there. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.